What's going on, fellas? I decided to grow a ruby today for some reason. I don't know why, but anyway, this is what I got. I'm working on the sapphire spray gun today. That's my goal. I want a gun that sprays a sapphire coating on anything you aim it at. Not nothing pretty. I just want a nice flame shield. This stuff is hard to melt. I'm going to be making some alumina today because I want to make some synthetic sapphire. The other day we seen how I was able to plug the hole on this fused silica crucible with silica sand coming out of our um, additive manufacturing torch that we were testing. This bad boy right here. Because I wanted to see if I could coat some things with sapphire because sapphire has a very high melting point of 2000 Celsius. So I've got a beaker of aluminum parts here and I'm going to add some acid. All right, I'm changing it up on you. We're going with some hydrochloric acid here to do this job. Now you can buy this stuff real cheap, but I don't want to spend 28 bucks on this experiment just to buy some, some of this stuff. Um, there is a way you can make it with a, an oxyhydrogen torch just by burning aluminum. The white smoke that comes off of burning aluminum is aluminum oxide. All right, so this probably wasn't properly calcined. I've read figures as high as 800 Celsius are required to calcine the aluminum chloride. So, I don't know what we really got here. This is some pretty dirty stuff. I did not use sodium high, uh, not sodium, but hydrogen peroxide to drop the iron. I'm just going with a dirty batch here. I even cooked it in this can without pre-burning it, but I'm not too worried about that. I just want to try to get a rig that can successfully dose powder. Got this little vibration rig here, and I've got a very good power controller to run it so we can get extreme control over the dosage. Okay, so I have the valve turned just a little bit here. I don't know if that's going to be enough or not. Got a little bend in our spout. Let's give us a shot. These are flowing now. Looks like once it gets going, when that's about the average I'm getting. Maybe a little much. If I adjust anything, I lose it all together. The key to making a very accurate dosometer is the diameter of the dosing rod. It, no matter what I do with this valve, um, once you get it set, once flow begins, a particular flow rate ensues and any attempt to adjust it typically just stops it all together. And I'm not sure we could increase it too much. Let's try and increase it here. Yeah, we can increase it quite a bit. We're really flaring out of there now. That's what I'm calling low. And that's gonna be the high. All right, we're just gonna go with the 0 0.035 welding tip with pure oxyhydrogen on this test. 
we're not going to be using the spray gun torch because I don't have very much of this material and this thing just sprays it all over the place. This is the torch that you guys have seen in the other videos and it works pretty well. Okay, that's about 2,300 watts. That's gonna freaking light the place up bad. That is the perfect set height, I think. That is terribly bright. All right, fellas, let's do this. Oh, crap. We're at 16 amps there. The system is on. There it goes. All right, man. Get in there, buddy. Oh, yeah. Hook me up, man. Oh, wow. Check that out, man. I'm going to turn the power on. Oh, this is terrible. All right, so there are, are some improvements to be made. I think I was a little too close. We made a tiny crucible. <laughs> oh, wow. Guys, I'm seeing blue. Check that out. So it was a terrible start, but we did something fascinating here. I'm, I'm seeing something curiously blue. The contamination is what controls the color of a sapphire. They say that all sapphires, except for the red ones, um, are classified as sapphires. If they're red, they're classified as rubies. This thing's not even hot. Let's dump this off. Wow. I mean, this was a poor start. We just got to get the torch height adjustment, but that's how this process starts, you know? And this was terrible. Aluminum oxide, I guarantee you. 
Yeah, there's a piece right there. So help me out in the comments, guys. I'm not very familiar with this process, but I know a lot of you are. What do you think we got going on here? Is this a blue sapphire? I know it looks like crap. I might give it a little touch up. What do you think, guys? Now this is called a bowel or a bowl yule or something like that. But it appears we were in fact growing a very crappy synthetic ruby here. That might be from the propane I shot on it at the last minute. I'm gonna use this camera lens to kinda protect my eyes maybe. Yeah, I can't do it like this. Getting some really fancy blue. Check that out, man. Maybe I'll just work it from the top down and melt it down. Yeah, let's do that. All right, guys, the refractory power of this material is insane. Let's see if I can get you to see this how much it can withstand. It's so blinding. Now watch this. When I move over to this uh, fire brick material. Look at that. So the melting point of this stuff is, is almost more than the oxyhydrogen torch can handle. So it's got to be sapphire. Look at that, it's just taking it. It doesn't even care. Just for comparison. It literally wallows a hole out. Can't do that with this. There. Take a look at this thing. Look at those holes I just bored in there, you guys, versus that. I think I'm cooking this thing to death. Turn the power up substantially here. I hit 20 amps. It's melting it now pretty good. It's like a light bulb, man. I'm officially blind. I overdid it a little bit. I got a little carried away. This is just the first test. Other than black. <laughs> Apparently we learned that you can burn a sapphire. And I have successfully burnt said sapphire. It's actually kind of a dark blue. All right, so I don't think I'm a big fan of the dosing rod. I think I'm gonna go back to this setup here. So this is kind of what I was messing around with, guys. You see that there? Isn't that just the most amazing thing you ever seen in your life? That is just too cool, man. Even this bad part right here, when they clean that off, it's got a nice looking piece under there. Um, the complexity of this process is far beyond what we've done in the experiment, but this is the type of crystals you can grow in this process. Now, the process I like the most based on my experience and the things that I've seen, this is an extraordinary configuration. I know for a fact that this is probably hotter than just oxyhydrogen because you can add more oxygen to this process than what's in the HHO system here. This is stoichiometric. It's two parts hydrogen. So what I got going on, just messing around. I, I don't plan on doing this, guys. My goal is to build a sapphire spray gun. Similar to a setup like this here. 
This right here is silica spray. You can see how cleanly I was able to cap off the hole that was in this centrifugal crucible. It's not a big mess at all. The melting point is so high that it's all you can do to get it to melt right where you want it to go. So this is the hole that we capped off using this spray gun right here. This is just a mount bar. I was in a hurry. I get in a hurry sometimes and I ain't trying to make stuff look fancy. Here's something that's very interesting. That's almost three inches around. I only want 90 bucks for that bad boy. It's like that big around, about that thick. Ain't no way I'm building a machine that does this. <laughs> Man, these things are cheaper than dirt.